everyone welcome or welcome back to my channel today i'm going to be showing you the process for this little painting that i did this was originally done for patreon and if you want to see the full process and walkthrough for it i will leave the link to it in the description so this one was done with gouache but i've already done this painting three times technically the first one was for just my color studies and then the second one was done with watercolors and then the third one is done with gouache with very similar colors but with a very different process and with a much more successful result the very first mistake that i did was choosing this paper for my watercolors i was so excited to use my new set of daniel smith's watercolors that I didn't really take the time to think about the best paper for it, so I just went with my Bao Hong watercolor paper. It's great paper by itself, but it's not that great for, especially for granulating watercolors. It's it just feels like the textures dry, the textures dry in a very peculiar way on it. Uh, it would have been okay for watercolor pieces that that would welcome those textures but for this painting and this reference photo i really wanted it to look very smooth and also very light and airy in hindsight if i had really thought about it i should have already known from the start that it was a piece done best with gouache but i didn't for a while and so i really tried it with watercolors and the process is just so unappealing i even tried mixing white with my watercolors just so I can get this gouache like textures on it and it still wasn't that great so halfway through my first try I just went ahead and started this one with the gouache and so the colors are very similar but for for these I have gone with very light colors already by themselves with my watercolors I couldn't really do that I had to rely on the water to bring up the values in the watercolors and it was it just wasn't as easy as i had initially thought so for this one i used a lot of my peaches and oranges and i paired it with my sky blue which i think was just genius for this piece and i wish that i could say that i had planned it but it really just happened to be in the colors that i saw in the reference photo that also ended up looking great when mixed together. There's a few other colors that sort of bring them out, like my dark greens and my sepia. Those two I really wanted to be the contrasting colors that would bring out the peaches and the sky blues to this piece. But in the end, what I really wanted to highlight were those warm but very light tones. So what I'm doing right now is just casting her in shadow. All of the colors before this were super bright to start with because I really want this piece to be bright by itself. What I wanted to do was cast her in shadow and that's why I've started from the edges of her and then, and then going ahead and bending it out towards the center. I did make one mistake in that I didn't just paint over her whole figure especially on her face, it ended up being lighter than I wanted. I should have just painted over it with my sky blue and peach mixture. And then I would have started with a base color that was already there values wise. So it must have been very frustrating for my patrons to see this because I did have to glaze over this later. Thankfully, I did the voiceover after I did the painting and so I could warn them on that but it was a painting that was a bit harder to follow than my other videos on my Patreon. I do think that after editing and analyzing the whole piece, it could have been a very straightforward piece. My nerves really got the best of me because I had just got back from having such a hard time getting this done with watercolors that I was more apprehensive with this one than I normally would have. 
And so I think that's why I didn't just paint over her whole face, even when I knew deep inside that I should have. So her hair in this piece is very important. Overall, it's a very light painting from the background to even the shadows that are falling on her they all are sort of just in the same values range so it's very important where there are dark colors in this piece to to really define their shapes so that it shapes out this whole painting her hair is one of those things so i spent a lot more time painting her hair than i normally would in a piece and the same goes for the leaves and the flowers in the background although i don't think that i spent that much time on them her face might look very simple and compared to all of the other portraits that I've done, it really should have been, but I think that I haven't drawn that many closed eyelids before that I spent such an unnecessary amount of time just trying to get, just trying to paint her eyelids. I had no idea how to paint them, and most of it is because in the reference photo she is, she does have her eyes open, but I decided to change it up and that's why I spent so much time just going back to her eyelids, trying to get her eye makeup right, and also the rest of her face, I was struggling so much with just keeping this very soft look that I wanted, and so I did have to go back to it a few more times after this, just so I could get it right, but they were very minor changes looking back at it and seeing it on video, but yeah, it did take me a few tries to get the exact look that I wanted for her face. I had such a fun time painting her dress. Just this sheer fabric that is that has very varying degrees of sheerness to it was so hard to do with watercolors, so it was so fun to finally finally be able to do it with a medium that works best for techniques like this and all I had to worry about was just the colors and where I would place them. It was also really satisfying to work with so many different colors and yet they still harmonize. Part of it has to do with the fact that I did the initial layers in these colors already so adding them back in with a little bit of the white to paint in these folds in the dress just made a lot of sense. I also decided to just darken up the wall on her right right there so I can bring up the brightness of her dress. So now what I'm doing is just glazing over her whole face again with my same shadow color. I'm using a very watered down version of my shadow color and I just really wanted to cast her whole face in shadow so that it doesn't stick out too much from the rest of the values. This was my riskiest move of the process just because glazing with gouache is always a risk in and of itself because you could end up reactivating the layers you've put in before but I think the key to this is just making sure you're not really scrubbing onto the layers underneath and that you're just depositing that shadow color on top but yeah it does take a while to get used to. Thankfully I've done it a few times already so it wasn't that bad and so after that it was just a matter of bringing back those details onto her face and also to the rest of her since I did glaze over some parts of her dress too. Again, I want to bring back and spend more time defining her hair more because it is one of the few dark things in the photo that really shapes it out. I also really enjoyed adding some of the orange and the lighter colors on top of the very dark sepia and 
the jet black that I had initially used for her hair so I think her hair went particularly well so I was really happy with how it looks in the painting. After this I only had to glaze over her face one last time and even though that second time it didn't go as smoothly as the first one, I was still very happy with how it worked and I wasn't really phased with how it looked so after I finished her hair initially it felt like it was just smooth sailing from there and I finished the painting finally in a few hours after that. It almost took me two weeks to get this painting from start to finish, so that was such a relief for me. One thing I did notice about this one is that... This was a painting that really made me realize how little gouache I actually use when I'm using my whole binds. I've talked about it before, but it really felt more apparent on this one. Part of it has to do with out of all of the problems that I had just in getting this painting done, getting my colors right wasn't really one of them, so if you guys can see my palette, I really haven't used that much paint. I actually just squeezed out the tiniest bit out of my tubes and worked with that for the whole time that I was painting this piece. So that was really nice and also just very surprising considering how much time it took for me to get this done. After the last time that I glazed over her face, it all just went very smoothly. Maybe after that time I was, I could already see where I really needed to go with the painting and that's why it didn't take that much time after that. When I really take a step back and study this piece, there's really not that many complicated elements to it. If I just stuck to my guts, it would have been a very straightforward painting to finish. And so having that realization after I've done with it and I have went through that whole time just getting to this point, I'm really starting to like this piece. I think it might be one of my newest favorites. It, it isn't particularly big and I think it's smaller than most of my paintings, but I've really come to enjoy this one. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this process with me and if you want to recreate this one, I will have the link to my Patreon in the description where I did a full walkthrough on it and that'll be it for this video. I think my next one I'll have an oil pastel video, my first one in such a long time, so I'm really excited for it. I'll also be uploading the sketching process for it as a separate video depending on how that one goes, but that is it for this one. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you to my patrons for being so supportive, especially after this one taking so long. But yeah, thank you guys for watching and I will be seeing you guys again soon.